Coach Eric Burnett, newly added and newly inducted to the Ohio chapter of the uh, National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Is that correct, Coach Burnett? Yes, sir. So how how many halls of fame hall of fames is this now? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh Clarion, Elyria, Lorain County. Yeah, I think uh when you guys were in high school, Lorain County Hall of Fame, like, yeah, that would have been I think your senior year. Um, so yeah. National. Wow. I think there's five. I think there's five. Do you lose track? Yeah, because it, it's not one of those things you set out to do. You know what I mean? It, I mean, it's it's great. It's they're, they're all um, really cool honors, but um, yeah. So let's uh, let's see. Uh, Lorain County, uh, Clarion, Elyria, National. Yeah, there's a. Does OHSA have one? OHSA two thousand. Yeah, because uh, that's when uh. Steber, both Stevers and Tomasello and those guys came and they saw me. It was at the uh, state tournament. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Well, listen, I, I've had you on the Barbarian Hour, which is just if you tilt my camera, this is the Barbarian Hour over here. This uh, is the Ohio Cash podcast. <laughs> it's I'm I'm creative, you know. I, I got a lot of uh, I'm I'm, an, I'm a smart guy, you know. I I have yeah. four walls in the room. It's a very small room, but yeah. um. I, I try to utilize all of them, I guess. That, that's the, uh, that's a creative use of space, man. Sure, sure. Very nice. I tell you what, I don't know if I could even like get a like a little cot down in here or something if I wanted to sleep. If my wife gets mad at me. So you know, it's funny because that my computer's flipped around now because we flipped this. Uh, this was my office in in my house, but now, like right there, is a futon for those purposes that you mentioned. <laughs> um, this wall here was my wall for some of my stuff that I wanted to put on there and a picture of Scotty when he won state um, and that wall behind me that was for my boys you know what I mean so but that's under construction right now because they're starting to take some of their stuff put it in their rooms things like that so gotcha. I'm going to put some other stuff on that wall so yeah my, my room's flipped around now as far as where the computer is last hey. time is that a What's picture that? of you in the back there with a big zero on your chest, your GPA? That's my high school GPA. They they, they were gracious <laughs> enough to put it on my singlet for me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. That was it. it was super zero. Um, we got similar office situations, except for I don't think you could fit a futon in here. Ah, okay. Okay. It's small. This office is, geez, like 12 by 10, probably. It's not big. Oh wow, and you're a big dude, dude. So you're probably in there. <laughs> hey, I was talking to my brother Ferd tonight, and he said he caught up with you, and you guys might catch up at the uh, national middle school duels. And I caught up with um, Tom Milkovich this summer. He got to talking about you a little bit on the uh, uh, content I shot with him and the interviews I did with him. He talked about you and the camp system and. You know, they've affected a lot of lives, but that's how you and Ferd met, right? At the, the Milkovich camps? Yeah, we met. We were um, going into eighth grade or ninth grade. I think going into ninth grade. And um, and we hit it off, you know, and that, that's kind of how our whole thing kind of started, man. You know, um, coming up and hanging out with, with Ferd and you guys and your family. And yeah, and Milkovich, you know, it's funny. Um, I got home Sunday night after the induction. And I kind of had a crazy weekend, man. And, and I don't post a whole lot on Facebook, um, but I wanted to share my weekend. And so, so uh, on Friday and Saturday, I did a camp up in Delta, um, which was which was awesome. I mean, I always love going up to Northwest Ohio. I mean, you know that. Um, Coach Nagel brought me in, and uh, so we did that Friday night, and then uh, we. We went and hung out. He put me in Airbnb at a place called 22 Steps. So there's a, a restaurant there, and the Airbnb was upstairs, and it's 22 steps up the steps to get to the Airbnb. Um, really, really nice place, man. So, but yeah, Friday night when we finished our wrestling session, I got together with uh, some, some awesome parents, 
And, you know, we hung out for a while and then um, got up the next morning and finished up the camp, did three sessions, got done at, I think it was four o'clock. I wanted to hurry up and get back to Oberlin because I, or back, I wanted to get to Elyria and I was, because I was meeting up with some friends in Oberlin. Um, they had come back into town for um, one of one of my high school buddies, a, a wrestler. He actually graduated uh, two years uh, after I did. He passed away this summer. So they were having a celebration of life for him on Sunday, which I which obviously I couldn't I couldn't make. Um, but Saturday night, a bunch of people that had come back in town from Atlanta and from Hawaii, and they were in town for for Grant Grant Robinson was his name. Um, they were in town for his celebration. So we hung out over in Oberlin uh, until the wee hours of the night. And then um, we got all these pictures together and, and whatnot. And I, I threw, I, I gave him some BTW shirts and we just had an awesome time. So I had all these pictures, right? And then of course the induction ceremony is Sunday. So I, I get home Sunday night and I'm like, all right, I, I want to share my weekend. So I put this post together um, just to, as far as everything that the weekend entailed. And Tom Milkovich, uh, uh, commented on my post and it was really cool because I actually talked about his family uh, during during the speech um, so it was really good to hear from from Tom man I mean because you know part of my speech was about people that just gave you know what I mean they, they, they whether it was uh, you know they donated their time or their knowledge or whatever it was and, and that's that's what the Milkoviches were to were to me and then, as you know, working our camps, um, our camps were modeled after, you know, the Milkovich camps, um, after, after the Clarion camps, things like that. So I just thought that was huge when, when Tom Tom hit me on that post, man. It made, made my day. You know, your camps in the early 2000s, I was actually, there were two summers where I worked for you and I worked for Jeff Jordan. And the camp schedule and a lot of the gist of the camps were the same. I mean, if, you know, we're talking technically speaking, everything you guys is do, you do is from like an inside tricep tie, right? You do a lot of underhook stuff and everything on the Jordan system is predicated usually from a collar tie. Obviously, you've both evolved and you do other things now, but it was wild to see them. You guys were kind of on level ground in the early 2000s. And then, you know, you have a job as a, was a homeschool counselor? Yeah. Yes. And Jeff, you know, that's what Jeff, Jordan did for a living. Um, do you have any regrets about not just going the camp route and becoming a businessman and doing camps? Or, you know, do you feel like you do these Hall of Fame speeches, you look back and you're like, you know what? I'm glad I worked for the city of Elyria and the city school system, sent my kids there. Did you have any regrets about not going the, the camp route? Oh, man. No, I, I don't, man, because um, I, I think my calling – I think I pretty much ended up where I was supposed to be as far as what, what I'm doing. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, make, make, making money is nice. Um, maybe could have made, made a few more bucks here and there, I guess, but I, I, that was never, that was never my route. You know, I mean, there's no problem with it. I have no problem with people doing that um, by any means, but that, that wasn't, that wasn't my route. Um I'm really glad that 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 I hooked up with Elyria Schools and, and they gave me this opportunity um, many times. You know, um, when when I could have been rifted, um, you know, they they found a way to bring me back in and and uh, so no, I, I I don't have any regrets at all um, with regard to that. And you know, that being said, you know, you bring up Jordan, you know, Jeff, when we were fledgling, I mean, he had already been going for a number of years, and we were just starting our camps, and he. He actually sent, if he had like overflow, if he had too many people, he actually recommended our camps. So some of the people that were trying to go to Jordan's ended up coming to ours, you know, in the beginning. And um, and that was great. And then we had the kids that did both, right? We, you know, Stevers went down to Jeff a lot and they were with us. And and I think our systems complemented each other, um, to be honest with you, as far as the kids that did both. I, I think they got a lot out of both camps, both systems. What was another th crazy thing is the only camp system that he ever sent his kids to was your camp. Mm -hmm. That was like, that had to be the ultimate compliment. Yeah. 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 That was cool. Um, that, 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 yeah, you're right. That's, that's about the biggest compliment you can get. 
knowing you know what i think one of them got like tweaked their knee or something when they came up like Bo or someone tweaked their knee do you remember that yeah it sucks dude it sucks <laughs> so we do there were like 90 kids in the camp we, we, we and we had plenty of space man we were being smart about it but it's like it just you know how it is man it happened and uh, I was scrambled eggs, man. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I mean, you don't want any kid hurt, right? But I, it's like Jeff Jordan's kid just got hurt, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's obviously fine. That's why I'm laughing about it. But, like, it's just, like, what are the chances, right? Like, those dudes wrestled year-round. You know what I mean? That, that's all they get. They did, right? They they, they, they they wrestled, right? And then right, right. you're camping and so, get hurt. What are the chances, right? <laughs> Uh, no, we're trying to get a hold of him, and I'm calling, and I can't reach him, and it was like, oh man, yeah, it, it sucked. It sucked. Why don't you care about the business end of it so much? Like, because you could be a multi-billionaire right now, you're not. But why is the business aspect of it, and the marketing, and all the other things that? Why is that just not not important to you? I don't want to say. I, I, I guess, yeah. You're right. It's it's not that important. I I, I can't. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But I I you know when you get when you get lucky, you know what I mean. When you have people like Jim and Donna Piecraft who build a barn in their yard, you know, and and um they they, they keep your overhead so minimal. And you know, Amy and Artie Wolf, you know, the Wolf family, they build a place, and once again, they keep it more than affordable. So you can you can offer people um camps and whether they have the means at that point in time or not you know what i mean and and so yeah you don't make as much money but um the flip side of that you get to work with some amazing kids who maybe ordinarily you wouldn't work with you know so for me you know that that's just how it's always been i mean i learned i learned from my high school coach coach zeman um I mean, that, that guy had me over at his house. He didn't have to do, there's nothing in your coaching contract that says, make sure your student athletes are taken care of and take them home with you if you need to. Right. There, there's nothing in there about that. So, so just going over an extra and beyond, you know, I learned that from, you know, coach Zeman and, and uh, Tom Milkovich and, and Mike Milkovich. And the, that's, that's what I learned. The Turnus brothers, Frank Jane and Illyria, like, they didn't, people, you know, and, and Tom Milkovich and, and Frank Jane and the Turnus brothers, they were high school coaches. I didn't go to their school. You know what I mean? Like, and they just helped me, you know? So um, it's cool that, like I said, I need to credit those people and, you know, Tadaki Hada and people like that, because there was, there was nothing in it for them, you know, monetarily or me competing for their schools or anything like that. There was nothing there. It was just, I want to help a kid. Coach Zeman showed up to camp, bringing Zane in at Piecrest. We just put the big screens up. Yeah. Frame screens. I remember he got out and he just like opened his door right into my car. And I'm, come on, man, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he doored my car. He had like a little S10. He rolled up. Zane was with him. Zane had a big, crazy head of hair. Yeah. The dude just doored the, just doored the crap out of my car. And I was like, what are you going to do? He was a man, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he was a man. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I said yeah. something and you're like, yeah, hey, I just let it slide, dude. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I put that dude through some hard times, man. I used to, I used to steal his car and stuff, man, after practice and whip it around the parking lot and things. And, <laughs> I was an idiot, man. You know, but he was cool. He was very cool about, about everything, man. You okay. Know? So, you have to do a speech. Did you write your speech? So I did. I did, man. But um, you, you know me, right? So I get off task easily. Um, <laughs> I'm not medicated, I, I you know. Um, so, yeah, I get up there and it's, uh, you know, hey, whatever. So I start off okay, but then I get all over the place, right? And, you know, it, it, and I get it. You have to have a limit, right? You can't have people up there. There's seven people being inducted, right? You can't have seven people up there talking for an hour. It, it's crazy, um, but it's hard too because when it's a when it's a lifetime achievement uh, award, you're, you're talking about a lifetime, right? Basically, the, the the life of a career, 
which is based on what you've learned throughout your entire life. So yeah, you get going and then a story pops into your head and it's like, whoa, a squirrel, look at that. Hey, I'm going to tell this story. <laughs> you know, completely out of pocket, um, yeah. which, which was cool. I think I think it went okay, but you know, there, there were some things that you want to talk about and people that you want to talk about. And I, I feel like sometimes you just don't get to talk enough about some people. You know what I mean? Okay. If you were to go back and do the speech again, who would you talk about more? You know, I, my, my wife, man, like Janet, she, she, and you know, because you've been around us since before we were married. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when I met her, um, she had been a hockey staff, you know, both in high school and, and, and she knew she went to Elyria high and she knew some of the wrestlers here and, um, but she was a hockey staff. She dated a hockey player in high school and then she went to BG and they had a good hockey program. So she always followed hockey. So when, when we met, um, we had a great time together, but you know, it was one of those deals when we, when I, when we talked about it, I, I told her, I'm like, this is what I do. I don't really know anything else. You know, I, I, I wrestle, we go to these tournaments and our program was just kind of starting to get better. Right. We had some kids that bought in and, you know, Kirk and Chris and Jason, they would stay with me at the barn and we would wrestle. And so I, I kind of half expected her to maybe be like, yeah, I'm good. You know, um, but no, she jumped right in. I mean, we went to freestyle state at Wadsworth. We went to Greco state when it was held down in Marion. Right. And it, I mean, we're, we're like a month into date and she's traveling with us. And, um, she got bored. She would sit up in the stands and then she's like, hey, put me to work. Get me involved somehow. You know what I mean? I got her involved with Kalis and, and, and Saniux. And, you know, so she she would help occasionally with some of the tournaments. And, and, she, and she was all in. And we didn't have kids yet. Anything, you know, nothing, nothing like that. She was in because she was with me, which was pretty awesome. And then, uh, of course, you know, later we have kids and they decide to wrestle. And, um, you know, she was just at everything. You know what I mean? And, and you know how it is. And you know me, right? You know how scattered, how I can get all over the place. Um, I mean, it was coming down to between her and Chris Chidlaw. You know, you know Chris has impacted our program. Um, those two, everything from Chris setting up the schedules and the buses and Janet setting up the concession stand and getting a hold of people for whatever occasion we had going on. Um, and me taking credit because... I made a few turkey wraps the night before the tournament and handed them out to the kids. And all the kids were like, coach, you're the best turkey wrap. Like, <laughs> like, like, dude, come on, man. I made a few turkey wraps. But every, you know, but Janet was spearheading all this stuff, right? Uh, you know, Mick and Nate decide to wrestle. I was talking to my mom about this earlier. Um, I didn't go to a lot of their stuff. You know, if they wrestled in a little tournament around here on a Saturday, I was coaching high school. My wife would take them. My dad would coach them. And Janet would stand next to my dad to figure out what the hell was going on. Like, what? what's he yelling? Why is he yelling that? You know what I mean? And I think my dad's that's like. a barrel roll. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? You know, Why is he keep yelling barrel roll? Yeah. <laughs> what are they doing out there? I never barrel know what they're doing. So, so, yeah. I mean, she was all in, man. And, uh. It got, you know, like you, so then later on, once we were doing OYWA and things like that, they'd wrestle on Sundays. And, you know, high school, we'd wrestle Saturday night, get done late, we'd go out for a while, whatever. And she'd get up in the morning and take them over for weigh-ins and she'd meet up with Scott Richter and some of our other youth coaches and they would handle that. And I'd lay in bed for an extra hour, you know, like, I don't know. She, she just was all in, you know, she was. You know, so, so anyhow, yeah, then you get later on, you know, putting BTW teams together um, to travel. And, and she was instrumental in that, you know, a lot of the stuff that Jody ended up doing later on, like once yeah. Mick and Nate yeah. went into high school, then Jody was doing more of that. Um, but, but Janet did all that, man. you know, I mean, you talk about not only helping to build the Illyria program, but helping to build BTW, you know. 
I listen, I don't know if it was you or somebody was telling me a story. They were dating a girl, and I want to say it was you or your brother, and you were rolling change. One of you guys was rolling change with this girl, and the girl was like, Yeah, I'm just not into wrestling or something. And you're like, Yeah, I guess we're not gonna be a thing then. Was that you or your brother? I it was probably me, but in fairness to I probably had some personality quirks that maybe <laughs> Played into that as well, like you know, being gone. The girl years. was like, "Oh uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't. I don't care for this wrestling thing." And I think I forget it was you or him, and you're like, "Yeah, I guess we're just we're done then. We're not a thing." Yeah, I yeah, I I, I like to I blame wrestling, I guess, but yeah, I, I probably have a couple of shortcomings there that might have played in as well. Um, but typically in January, that was usually a wrap. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> get to January, and it's like, nah, man, it's cool. I'm gonna move on. You know, and I'd be like, ah, okay, it's cool. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll stay around. Maybe yeah. I'll stay around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> so, but yeah, man. And then, uh, you know. Okay. Uh, so, okay. your wife, how did you meet your wife? I forget. I met her at the night. And, dude, so this is, this is what a candy ass I am. We were at a night at the races, and I was with our, our team mom at the time, Mary Felton. And um, they worked in the same industry. So there was a, there was a big fundraiser. Um, and I never been to a night at the races. I didn't know what the hell that was. So I go, what's the night at the races. It's like, they, they put a screen up and you, and they have these uh, fake horse races, right? I mean, they're, they're real, but they're from some time in the past, I guess. And you're supposed to bet on these horses. Like you name the horses and you bet on them. And is it a fundraiser or is it gambling? Well, it's a fundraiser. Yeah, it's a fundraiser. Um, but it's game. Yeah. So uh, it's toward the end of the night, man. And I see this chick walking. She's got a ball cap on. And I, I got a ball cap chick thing. It's it's good. So uh, I'm like, holy smokes, Mary. I'm like, who is that? She tells me it's Janet, Janet Fairchild, whatnot. And she's like, you gonna, why don't you go talk to her? And I'm like, well... Why don't, how about you go ask her if I can get her phone number? And uh, so she did. And I got her phone number and I called her like the next day. And I, I left my message. My message was, hey, Janet, it's Eric Burnett. I saw you the other night. Um, give me a call back at 440-225-579. And that was it. I didn't leave the last digit, bro. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. So she actually worked it like she ended up getting a hold of Mary or something and called me back and she's like, listen, Dick, you didn't you didn't leave the last digit of your phone number, right? <laughs> Dude, in our first conversation, she's on the phone with me and I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm fixing a shower head. I'm like, come on, man. Like that's a dream come true. You know me. I don't know the difference between a right or a left-handed hammer or like I don't know how to do anything as far as home repair. So I was like, wow, this chick is hot. <laughs> okay. I remember some memories popping up this summer from your wedding. When did you guys get married? I, I mean, my whole family was there. I was there and I got some pictures of your brother and you and your wife from your wedding. When did you get married? Oh, one. Yeah, it was Oh one, man. We got engaged. And then the next day I went up to Ann Arbor. We got engaged on a Saturday night. I drove to Ann Arbor on a Sunday to go work a camp for McFarland. And Kozicki was up there. Andy Robot, um, Freed worked the camp. We had a great time, man. But um, yeah, I was like newly, newly engaged at that point, man. Um, it was all. We actually got engaged after a graduate graduation party for uh, uh, Kirk Alt, who was one of the original Illyria wrestlers that bought into what we were doing. Um, so yeah, we, we went to his grad party and um I asked her that night. Uh, and she said she said cool. But then I had to go back because I did everything ass backwards and I called her dad, you know what I mean, the next day. And I was like, hey dude, I, I, I did it backwards. I hope it's cool. You know, and he was down, he was cool with it. So <laughs> it worked out, you know. Oh we're so, so, so you've been married 22 years now. How old's Mick? 21? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. She, she told me originally, she's like, um, you know, it's cool. 
if your wrestling is cool and you're really busy, she goes, I'm not sure if we should, we should have kids at this point. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. You know? And then of course, yeah, we're golfing. I'm on the tee. I'm on the tee and we were pretty competitive at the time, even though I was not as good as her at golf, but yeah, we're on the first tee. And she's like, Hey, I got some news. You want it now or later? And I'm like, give it to me now. And she's like, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, and I was already pretty cr crappy at golf anyhow, dude, but you can imagine those nine holes, especially that first drive. Cause it, yeah, the adrenaline, the excitement, whatever. I mean, it was, and it, plus it was a ploy for her to kick my ass at golf that day. I mean, I, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, that's just kind of how we roll. So you guys started, the first house you lived in was over in, I was in, more in Elyria, like south, right? It was over in the St. Jude's area, right? Near uh, Elyria Catholic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we well, had, yeah. Two miles away? What's that? Two miles away? If that. Yeah, maybe maybe two miles. Yeah, from where we live now. Yeah. So Is yeah, Marcel, Marcel's. Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's right. Remember, I held the pinball machine up for a half hour. That was awful. That was awful. You meant dude, awful. dude. Still got so it, don't you? Dude, what's that? Still got it, don't you? It's in my basement, and it's currently not working. And I need to get it out of my basement. But guess what? I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> that. <laughs> that's good hey I, yeah i'll i'll die in this house or i'll move out of this house whatever that thing's staying i ain't moving not after that experience we had you're gonna have to have somebody get a sledgehammer and like a sawzall yeah right right that's the, only way get out of here. that's the only way yeah that was awful <laughs> for me for me more <laughs> most generally me i was dude i remember it was like cutting into my thighs yeah. so i was you letting it rest on my thighs you almost lost a leg. Yeah, you got it. You, you still have it. Okay. How long have you been at your current? Was it Hilliard now? You're on Hilliard? Yeah. Yeah, I think we moved here in 06. 06 or 06, yeah. So it's been 16, 17 years. Wow. Nate, was Nate a baby in the other house? Yeah. Yeah, because Nate, Nate was born in 04. So, yeah, he was he was just a, he was a peanut. Wow. Um, but that... You know, as the kids got older and as our team got better, I, I think, and I, and I don't know, I'd have to ask her, I guess, but I would say some of the most challenging times she had with me were like the night before you're wrestling a team in a dual meet that you're probably supposed to be, right? And of course, you know, expect the best, prepare for the worst, whatever, right? So you're always preparing and things like that. So I'd be in the kitchen. It'd be nine o'clock at night, the night before a match, whatever. And she'd come walking by and she'd be like, what's wrong? And I'd be like, wringing my hands, like, sweating. Like, oh man, this team tomorrow. And I'm, oh man, these, these guys are, they're, they're coming for us. They're, they're going to be ready. Um, and, I, and, and she's like, what are you talking about? It's skill pots, Bill high school. And you guys, <laughs> you beat Last year you beat them fifty-seven to three. You're gonna be fine. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know, man. Mick and Shaw were wrestling to get together today. They're both not feeling well, so they're probably both gonna be sick tomorrow. I got an email about one so and so from a teacher today. He's he might get suspended tomorrow. What, man? And these guys are tough. And she's like, well, they're they're one thirteen pounder. He's, I looked his record up. He's four and twenty one. Um, I, I I think he'll be fine. And I would just keep figuring out ways that we were going to lose this match. And, and, and finally, she'd be like, dude, I, I, can you be more negative? I, 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 what, what? So that was challenging. I mean, dude, there were nights, the kids were little, but you know how Nate is. Nate knew everybody. Like, Nate was in like fourth grade. And he was like Nate Brakeman. Like he knew the kid from Southwest Ohio. Like, and So she would yell upstairs, like when I'm in the kitchen tripping about this. And she'd be like, guys, come downstairs. You remember how they both were staying upstairs in the attic? Yeah. And their bedroom was upstairs. And they'd both come down and she'd be like, listen to this jackass. Listen to what he's talking about right now. And, and Nate would be like, dad, you, we're going to shut those guys out. What are you talking about? But 
that's the type of stuff she had to deal with as a, as a coach's wife dealing with with me you know what i mean and just and, and having my, my episodes you know do you miss that at all do you miss that head coaching anxiety and that that kind of like nervous anxious thing the night before do you miss that i i don't know man because last year um you know you care so much about a about a program so i i think the way things kind of went last year we had some things derail that wasn't anybody's fault it wasn't any anybody anything that the coaches did and the way i likened it when i was talking to armando was i slept better when i was a head coach i slept better the night after the match than i did the night before the match well last year i didn't sleep well the night after the match if that makes sense the night of you know after the match occurred because there were so many things that kind of happened it was nobody's fault you know we were starting five brand new kids last year and we had some really good kids that didn't wrestle and it was a tough season. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, you know, I, I still, I still get, you know, going to the individual individual matches, you know, I'm, I'm helping with uh, team Ohio, the, the uh, junior high team. And we were out in Mannheim a couple of weeks ago and you still get amped. You know what I mean? You, you know, the kids want to win. So yeah, it's, wrestled nine dual meets and uh yeah you still get you still get pretty fired up so how many years i, I, I miss it because i haven't been able to was that many, okay so we know that you're retired as a head coach but how many years do you have left before you can retire into like the str strs like the opers strs whatever system you guys are in how many yeah. years you can retire actually it's, it's three to five depending on what i want you know what i mean well you want the higher percentage so we're gonna say five yeah just being uh, being living in a tent like isn't cool or whatever, right? Yeah, I don't want to live in a tent. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. You, I'm want, not, you want to like crazy. live in your house and like be able to afford groceries and be able to drive places and whatnot, right? I, I like I like to drive, eat, and drink. Those yes. those three things. Um, yes, but I don't want to live like, outdoors. I'm I like to drink too. I mean, I mean, right now in my uh, classes, we're talking about water a lot. Talking about agriculture, you know, 70% of our body is uh, water. So we all yeah. like to drink, right? Yeah, yeah. I like a little bit of agua. But, like, when we talk about it, it's like, could we see you come back as a head coach or is that chapter, is that is that over? Yeah, I don't know. The old cliche, never say never, right? But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know I, I'm fairly certain on one thing. Um, I don't want to be a head coach in a rebuilding phase if that makes sense you know um it, it, it's it's i don't think you know by the time by the time i retire see i'm gonna i'm gonna coach at Illyria because that's where i work right so and and i love this program and i love the people involved in it so this is where i'm gonna be coaching until i retire from my job um so if the right opportunity were to happen i guess at 50 what am i 54 so at 58 59 years old yeah, maybe, but I don't know that I would have the energy at that point to rebuild. You know what I mean? It's so, but, but yeah, I'm, 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 your boys are getting into coaching now. You know, Mick had a guy who, uh, Holman, who was a BTW kid from Monroeville, Ashton Holman won the state, you know, and Mick was one of his main workout partners. Could we see you coach underneath one of your kids? Is that something that you would be interested in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, of course. I, yeah, that's, um, that that could be a lot of fun. We had so much fun together wrestling. You know what I mean? When I was coaching them, um, for, for mo mo most of the time, we just had so much fun. So I don't know why that would be any different. You know what I mean? Like if, if I were to be assisting one of them, um, I think we'd have a we'd have a blast, man. Uh, you know, I, you're you still do a lot of workouts. You still like wrestle a lot. You still run a lot. You jump rope for a half hour. You lift weights multiple times a week. You're 54. Um, I had Coach Nelson on from Finley, North Royalton guy. He's double knee, double knee replacement. You know, I have a lot of these guys on. You know, Mike Kozicki's my age. Mike's had a hip replacement, right? Like a lot, our, our joints wear out, right? It's it's a it's an unforgiving sport. You've never had any of that. You are like healthy as a horse, fifty four years old, still run, probably work out six six times a week. Would you say five six times a week? I take off. Yeah, you got it. It, it, it all depends. I, I make sure I take one day off. Okay. And sometimes two, 
you know, depending on what I've been doing and things like that. Um, but then you have like a mow day, right? Like, so if you, if you don't work out that day, if I can time it right, I'll mow. You know what I mean? I'll mow my mom's grass, mow my grass. So you get a sweat in, right? Um, just, you, you gotta be active, right? I mean, that, that's that's the biggest thing. Um, and, and I told God, I mean, even when I was 25 years old, when I retired from wrestling at 24, I'm like, I'm, I, I just don't want to get out of shape. So I just continued to wrestle and run and jump rope and lift and do whatever. But my, my biggest, um, I guess the, the best advice I, I gave guys some of the guys that are now in their late thirties, early forties, I told them back when they were done wrestling, don't take too much time off the mat. You know, if you want to continue to wrestle, if you take three months off your, your body is, and it's going to take a while to get back in. So that, that's what I, I guess I, I've tried to do. Never, never take too much time away, you know, so I can stay, stay, stay involved in that capacity. Um, and then, I mean, just dumb luck, my style of wrestling, um, I, I wasn't injury prone because of my style of wrestling. You know what I mean? I just, I, I didn't beat myself up. Um, and I was lucky in that regard. Yeah. You were like Ian Miller hitting flying Bondinis, right? Uh, no, <laughs> no, no running inside trips. No, no nonsense. Right. <laughs> no. Walking yourself uh, off, bouncing your head off, off, off the mat. No barrel roll, snap downs, tilts. Yeah. It's it's wild because now your brother, your brother tore his bicep rolling with Gray this summer. He had a hernia last year and his stuff all hit him boom boom, right? And like you guys wrestle really hard still. He he can't do that anymore. You know, when your body starts to break down, this sport it's the worst sport for that. And it's like you look at Tadaki, Tadaki's a mutant, right? Tadaki's 80, 80, 80 something, 82. What is he? 84. What is he? He's right there, around there, yeah. And he can still do his push-ups. And yeah. It's up to five, right? He can still do his age and push-ups. I think his shoulders, one shoulder's going on him. Mm. But that guy can show technique. He can still had a drop stop in right. his 80s. That's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's, like, it's incredible. When I see it, I'm like, wow, we can still show, like, actual, real, coherent technique. And and demonstrate it. I've done, I've just never seen that, and the guy's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. And you've been one since you were little, guys. Since you were Ferdy's age. My yeah. Friend. Yeah. Oh yeah. Seven, yeah. eight years old, right? Yeah. He took me. He took me to camps with him and stuff. He'd work Bobby Douglas's camp, and, and you know he'd throw me in his car and take me with him. And yeah, I mean he he showed me a really nice fireman's carry. You know, as far as Tadaki with the fireman's and barrel and the Milkoviches between those those two entities, there right. I, I learned a lot of my, my, my style of wrestling from them, you know, or their yeah, style. That's their deal. That's their deal. They're a big, like the Milkoviches are big firemen's. I think Tadaki had a fireman's in the NCAA finals. Okay. You ever, hey, you ever watch his NCAA finals? Watch it. Remember when they, yeah, with them. The first takedown, then one point. Yeah, they, Remember they changed the rules. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> We watched it in LaGrange. Yes, with him at the at, 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 at Milan. Remember his, remember his, like the score was like nine to six, but he completely dismantled the guy. And really I, close. He, he's like, oh, oh, yeah, they two for the first takedown, but then one for every other yes. takedown. Yeah, it was nuts. I just don't know if they won the Japanese guy to win. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I, I'm just if I'm being honest. Um. <laughs> Seriously, like I was like, oh, yeah, this is like the biggest homer match I've ever seen. And he was killing the guy. It wasn't close. Yeah. I think yeah. it was an Arizona State guy, too. Okay. Yeah, it blew my mind. It, yeah. And like it I said, blew, I didn't know. It moved. was crazy. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it he, was. What's crazy is his dad was the guy who took the sport of amateur wrestling to the nation of Japan. And you got to understand, within four years of his dad taking it there, they had an Olympic team. Yeah. And then they had their first gold medalist within 20 years of that. that. That's unreal, man. Yeah, that's crazy next level, man. Yeah, I, I like Tadaki. He busts my chops a lot, though. But well, the he, technology busts my chops a lot. I like it, though. Yeah, well, he's a funny dude, man. He, he he's funny, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you look at potentially coaching again, and, you know, you're in your, you're 54, but you can still you can still do everything. There's no joint replacements. Um you still got your gourd intact. I mean, where do you go from here? Where do you go from, you know, 
you've got all these hall of fames. Where do you go? What's what, when does wrestling end for Eric Burnett? Does it ever end? I don't, I don't think it does, dude. I was just talking to somebody at school about it today. Um, you know, I, I want to make time in my life for some other things, but you know, when, when wrestling has given, given me so much, um, and it, it, and it really does get in your blood. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, you don't want to not be a part of it. You, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, and I'm going to have to alter my coaching style at some point. At some point, I'm not going to be able to wrestle as much live, you know, and I've always, I felt like I've had a decent eye as far as helping kids or, you know, but, but um, being able to grab a hold of somebody and push and pull and feel which way they're leaning and, trying to correct them with those types of things. That's always been why I, I like to, to be able to go live or drill with a, a kid to, just to see if they're moving uh, awkwardly or, or, you know what I mean? Leaning too much or that, that pressure release where you're pushing and pulling. And, um, but that that's going to have to change eventually. And I know that, um, but no, I, I want to be, I want to be coaching um, until I can anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy too, because your dad, your dad was so into it. Right. And like everything you and your brother do is, is predicated off of barrel rolls, inside tight control. Um, and that's a lot of that's feel and it's hard to teach it, you know, and when you got a torn bicep or your elbow would always get, I remember your elbow would be the big blown up elbow thing. I remember that. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's that thing called? You got one in our knee. Or Yeah. yeah. It's just, Dude, I was rough. Dustin Schlater, I was wrestling him at the junior dual training camp and we hit the gym floor. Like my elbow, it, we went off the mat, my elbow hit the gym floor and I'm like, what the hell is this? What the, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I went and saw our trainer. I went and saw Ann. She's like, dude, yeah, we just got to wrap it. Just put this wrap on it for a while. It'll go away. Stop underhooking him. Yeah, right. Yeah. Why yeah, are you gotta... underhooking that guy? Come on. <laughs> uh, but your dad, you know, like your your dad was just so into the biggest thing with your dad was he wanted guy he wanted you guys to get educations out of the sport of wrestling. Because your dad worked in a steel mill in the rain, right? Yeah, yeah. And he was a, a marine in Vietnam, and he was a pretty hardcore guy, right? Yeah, he was. He he loved being a machinist. I mean, he he told me that he 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 loved what he did. But he look, my dad knew me, right? He's like, bro. Like, like I said, I, I, I don't want to do anything like that. You, you know what I mean, dude? Like, um, yeah, I mean, he, he knew I, I probably was never going to be a machinist or, it, or for that matter, in any kind of a trade. So he's like, wrestle, go to college and get into something that way that you're going to be pretty good at, right, for, for a vocation. Um, so that's kind of where he was, at least with me. You know? What's wild to me now is like, I don't know if college is always necessarily the, the direct route that kids need to take. I think that the trades are actually really, they, they need to start coming back. I'm teaching a class now. I don't know if you know this, but I teach career-based intervention. And my big thing is like, if you have kids who don't like school, right? Well, let's get them out and get them working, right? Let's get, let's get them a skill. Right. They're going to go to, they're not going to go sit in a class at Edinburgh. They're not going to go to Clarion. They're not going to go to Pitt. They're not going to go to Kent state or Youngstown state. They're going to flunk out. Right. Yeah. So rather than put them in debt, let's put them in a trade. Being a machinist is an honorable. Your dad raised you guys that way. He, raised, you know, he had a roof over your head. You got to go to wrestling camps and go to all the trips you wanted to go to. So it's an honorable way to raise your family. And I think that we need to almost start getting back to that now as a as someone who's teaching it. And you know, I was raised by an iron worker, as you know. And Papa Ferd was an iron worker, as you know. You know, you know my Papa Ferd. You raised my dad as an iron worker. I got a bunch of uncles who are pipe fitters. How hey, how about my dad's got three brothers that are were pipe fitters, right? And his one brother, other brother is a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you know my right. uncle Kenny, right? Right. Wow. That's wild. You talk I to my uncle that. Kenny and you're like, dude, what you are the definition of an anomaly. Right? Oh, wow. it's crazy. I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago. Man, what a fabulous guy. Just an awesome guy. Talented guy, an artist, uh, an artist as far as, you know, he's a painter. Um, he is a uh, song, singer, songwriter, super talented guy, man. And a young spirit for a 70, 
two year old guy, you know? So it's like, it's like awesome. And I'm like, what were you fell off the knucklehead wagon? How, how, how are you? He's a psychologist, dude. That's see, but they're, I, they're talented. Dude, I've heard your dad saying, bro. I mean, there's some real talent there with those. Dudes. Yeah. They got some talent, the old Millers. And, um, dude, I told, you know, it was a crazy thing. I had Charlie Augustino on a couple of weeks ago. I remember Charlie from the barn, right? Charlie. Yeah. And Charlie's another legacy family. He's, you know, the uh, maternal grandson of Vince Matucci. But um, he's Sicilian and Italian, right? Well, Papa Ferd was on both invasions. He oh, invaded wow. Sicily and Italy. So one day I had a, a one of our administrators come up and talk to my class. And she was telling the story about her Italian and Sicilian relatives hiding in caves when the United States was invading. And dude, I got this crazy, like sinking feeling in my stomach. And I was like, that was my grandpa that was invading. Right. Wow, that was my, my grandpa was that were in that crazy. Right. And I was yeah. like, oh my God. Dude, I like started sweating when she started talking about it. And then I showed her, I want to say I showed the uh, the administrator, I showed the, the lady, she's a really awesome lady. I showed her and she's like, wow, that's, that, that, that is crazy. Yeah. But, you know, and I was like, wow. So like, you know, we're talking about a guy who was, you know, who was at D-Day, he was at, you know, uh, North Africa, Sicily, Italy, all, all the major land invasions, the amphibious land invasions from uh, the U.S. Navy and then, and then an iron worker, right? Like, uh. So I think those are honorable things that people can get into. And I know your nephew, Max. Yeah. Just, just uh, joined the uh, pipe fitters. Yeah, he did. You know, and, 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 he's, and he's doing really well. You know, and he digs it. He just had a birthday, as a matter of fact. Happy birthday, Max, 21. Right yeah. Um, but the, now here's the other thing. So you got the guys that they don't want to sit in a classroom. They want to go into a trade. Now you have these programs starting up. There's one in Pennsylvania. I think there's one in Virginia where it's it's college wrestling. You can wrestle and you're in trade school. And that, that I'm hoping that's kind of the wave of the future, man. I like that. You know, like my brother Tate, I think, he, you know, he could have, he had to have a heart surgery, right? But I think if my brother Tate could have been involved in the trades yeah. and continued to wrestle, I think that that's something where, you know, he... He 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 got a got a college education, and then yeah. in the position to where he could run a company. Because a lot of the times to run a company, they do want you to have a a four year degree. It's not always required required, but man, the degree isn't just it, it isn't what it was even five years ago. Is what's wild about it. Skills are right. more than a degree now in my eyes. Well, and that's, and that's the thing. I, I I feel like you know, and, and like I said, these programs. You know, I talked to one coach, and I can't remember his name now. It bums me out. I have it in my phone. But I mean, you, you, you literally, like you would go to, to welding class or, or whatnot, you know what I mean? And, 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 and you would, you would be wrestling every day and going to these classes. And, and then I think you, I, you, you, you can figure out how to run a business, whether it's getting a business degree or being a double major or whatever. And I'm like, wow, man, I hope that, tra I hope that grows. Cause I, I think there are a lot of kids out there right now, man, that, that would, would go that route, you know? Well, we need it too. We need it because you have the baby boomer generation, which is obviously all retired at this point, most of them. And the tail end of them is retiring. And that was a that's a big chunk of people. And you have to replace those people. And that's why we have these massive shortages right now. And quite frankly, a lot of people um don't want to work. You know, they got a taste of not having to work for a couple of years. And um yeah. I'm not even going to get you started on that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to send you down that route. We're not going there tonight, okay? I know, that's a wormhole. I, we're not doing that. But, like, I, I think it's honorable to be in the trades at this point. But you got to want to work, man. you yeah. got to want to work. Like, Max Burnett, your nephew, I feel like Max Burnett isn't afraid to work. Right. You know, and, and when you get into a school – and you're able to be a teacher and you can get a four-year degree and you can get wrestling to pay for it. That's ideal for a guy like me and you, but that's, we're not everybody, you know? Right. And I, and I think, and I, you're, you're, you're a guy who acknowledges people's uh, 
unique differences, right? I mean, we want we want people to 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 do what their strengths are, but at some point, you know, we're going to have to start addressing it because we have so many people that have retired from the trades and we just need more people in it, you know? Well, that's look, you know, I'm not a guidance counselor, man. I, you know, they, 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 that's they, those, those people do an amazing job in their job, man. But, but I am with kids, you know, two to two and a half hours a day, if not more. Right. And you get to know these kids, you know, and, and you can sense where they're at. Right. And they, they talk and you're on the road trips and, and, and it's like, Holy smokes. I talked to the parent. I'm like, listen, this is what this is what Junior's saying right now, man. I, what do you think? What do you think about trade school? What do you think? You know what I mean? Because look, every kid, I shouldn't say every kid. Most of the kids in the wrestling room are saying, "Yeah, man, I want to wrestle in college," right? And it's like, yeah, it's cool because I, I would never discourage somebody from doing that. But it's like, listen, man, you're you're scraping by. You're you're barely eligible, you know. And, and it, it could be various things um but some of these kids work really hard and you just can tell that school is kind of is not their thing you know and then you hear about them rebuilding an engine you know what i mean like what'd you do over the weekend i, I rebuilt i re rebuilt this engine or, or you know I, I and i'm like well dude you know um so yeah i'm with you 100 percent on that man you know, that we have to guide these kids in the direction that you feel like, well, I, I think this is maybe where the kid wants to go. But he's going to tell me, I want to be a D1 college wrestler, you know, and I don't know. I, I really just feel like we got to use it as a vehicle to, to get the degree and, and, and obviously use the work ethic and the, the character it's revealed and time management, weight management, all these other things that come along with, with wrestling, being diligent helping others, you know, you're not the only, you, you know, it's an individual sport, right. But it's, it's also a team sport. And, yeah. you know, you've had some great examples. You've had some all-time greats, you know, you got a guy who graduated from West Point, man. You got a West Point guy. You got a couple of Cornell grads, it. man. You got, right. You got some Cornell grads. You got, you got guys that are, that are doing it right. Like you look at Ben Darmstadt, right? Like at one, you know, it got to the point and it's a fork on the road for Ben Darmstadt, right? He battles injuries. He's got this super unique frame and body style, right? And eventually the guy's going to get a Cornell degree. Or is the guy going to try and chase this wrestling dream, right? Which you can do both. We're talking about a guy who could have won the national title as a freshman, right? Right? I mean, look at it. And, and eventually it just didn't work out for him, but he gets a degree. He's an All-American. I think that, I, listen, I like where Ben Darmstadt's at. I don't know about you, but I like where he's at, right? Yeah, man. He's in a healthy spot. You know, no, I mean, he did what he wanted. Deep. He didn't, he didn't necessarily get what he wanted, but he did what he wanted. You know what I mean? It, 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 and, 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 and he learned so much from it and we get to, we get to communicate, you know, quite a bit and he's just in such a good spot right now, but it's because of what you're talking about. You know, he put himself in a position to succeed. He did the right things in high school. He listened to his mom and dad, right? And you know, in, in his in his mentors, whatnot, right? And then he and he and he did his best, right? Of course, of course, he wanted to be an NCAA champion. We all wanted that, but you know, he did his best. And what he learned, and it's cliche because we say it all the time, but what he learned on his journey that he's applying right now, and he's got a great life. I mean, he's got a great life. Where, where's you know? Ben right now to like to tell people like give him an update on him? Well, he was uh, most recently he was out at Stanford, um, but he, from what he was telling me, he's going to be where Cole is. So he's going go to go to UNC. He's going to go to Chapel Hill. So that was the last I talked to him. It's been it's been a few weeks, you know what I mean. But that that's what he was telling me. Um, I mean, he he really he he loves Rob Cole, you know, and um, they have a great relationship. So. You know, you got another kid. Um... And Joshua breeding, you know, probably the, the most intelligent guy you've ever had come through the program. I, I think test results would speak for that. And then he's a, he's a Princeton grad. Right. And he was raised by a Marine, right? The guy was raised by, by, by a Marine cop. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Once again, like another guy that's like this, almost like it, it's wild to think about it. Right. You you're putting guys through West point, Cornell, Princeton, three grads that you have. And then you got guys who are, you got guys at Tiffin, you got guys at some of these D2 programs. 
you got guys all over it. And you got Coach Gillespie. He's an Iowa grad, right? These are all your guys. Well, you know, and back in, you know, and we got, we have guys, we have guys in the military. We have guys um, that are police officers. And, you know, um, you know, we had two twin brothers, you know, uh, the Betzel brothers back in the mid to uh, 2005, around in there, 2006. They both they went to Brown. Brown. Brown? Yeah, they went to Brown. One's flying helicopters now, one's flying airplanes. I mean, they're, but once again, they completely bought into, you know, whether it was cross country or wrestling or whatever, they bought in 100, 100%. And that's how they handled everything in their life. You know what I mean? Dude, um, those guys were awesome. They would fight. And yeah, yeah, they were real great. hard. Was it Mark yeah. Betzel and Alex, Mark and Alex? Oh, great kids, man! Wow, thank you for bringing them up. Love those guys. Yeah, yeah, they they were awesome, man. Um, and, I I still run into their dad every now and again. Ed, man, he worked for the Chronicle Telegram here in Elyria. Okay. Um, so I see him. He rides his bike. I, I I see him every now and again, man. Just good, good people, man. What What um, do you think the biggest yeah. thing now that we're shifting, right? Like. Not everybody's meant for college wrestling. We do have this thing where trades are now a big thing and people can make six figures doing a trade and the world is changing, right? And if you're a savage and you've got a work ethic, you can go and get these jobs or start your own business, become a mechanical contractor and make 250 grand a year. What do you think, you know, because you've always been like, ah, oh, get a degree, get a degree. Do you think you'll, you might start shifting your philosophy a little bit? I already have. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm talking as far back as, you know, 10 to 12 years ago with just, just not, not knowing for sure, but just looking at kids and going, man, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a good route for you just to go to college. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's so, yeah, it, you know, in the beginning because of me, all right, it was college, college, college. So that's where I was. When I first started coaching at Amherst and then over here at, at Elyria, it was like, hey, you need to be going to college. And, but but then, you know, you, you have to shift. You know what I mean? It, it's thing, you get, get to know your kids, figure out what's right, what's wrong for them. Um, I don't know. So, yeah, it's been at least 10 to 12 years, man, where I, it, I wasn't pointing kids in that route all the time, you know. Um, yeah, for everyone it's like i remember my first year as a teacher 0304 i was at lakota high school you know um in between fremont bowling green Fostoria, and it was a lot of farm kids and i remember thinking to myself man at kent state they're telling me everybody's got to go to college i'm like these kids aren't all going to college yeah, right right <laughs> now, it's not happening yeah and then now with the population of kids that i'm working with i'm trying to get i want them to get jobs my thing is I want you to get a job. I want you to be, I want you to have a skill. I want you to build a work ethic. I want you to become responsible. I want you to be able to engage people, not stare at your phone, not talk on your phone while you're supposed to be working. Very simple things. Understand what a resume is. Understand what a cover letter is. You know, just, just simple things, man. How to fill out an application. Just very basic soft skills and just, just skills that so many people just don't have now. And you guys have always been about that though. You've always been about like, Hey man, let's help you become better people. Let's help you well, do things. It, it, that, and so where we're at right now, man, especially right now is. Oh, okay. You, you know, there's an old phrase, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Right. And, and where we're at right now is we got to figure out how to make these horses thirsty. Right. Because, you know, especially now coming out of COVID, coming out of those couple of years where we were inactive and this and that, and a lot of drive went out the window. Okay. In adults and kids, whatnot. So now like at my job, and it's not even just me. I mean, I'm obviously coaching. We've always done that. Right. You, you figure out what, what makes this kid thirsty. What, what do we got to do? What, 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 you know, um, you know, but now even more so just with the, with the general student body, the kids that I'm working with, I'm like, man, oh man, I, I got to figure out individual kids when I talk with them, like, you know, um, what gets them going, you know? And, and uh, yeah, it, that, 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 that's tough, you know, because there's, I, I, I think there's kids out there right now that don't know what makes them thirsty, you know what I mean? And trying to point things out to them and, 
what do you enjoy? What what gets you going in the morning? You're an hour late to school every day. What can get you going? You, you know, and just trying to trying to figure that out. I got I got a student man, and she's amazing. She misses a lot of hours of school, and nothing lower than a C except for one. She's got a, a gym class, first period. She's failing it, and she needs it to graduate. You know what I mean? And I'm like, she's so bright, so smart. And, and, and I, you know, when I asked her, I'm like, how are you going to hold a job when you're going to try to be an hour late every day? And she was just like, at least she didn't say, you know, I, I'm i not worried about it. Because some of the kids are, I, I'm not worried about it. Or, you know, with TikTok and all that stuff going on right now that, I don't know. I don't know what this. St- I don't know what the stats are as far as kids that people that make it big on social media. Remember when we were kids and everybody wanted to play in the NBA or everybody wanted to play pro football and you were like, yeah, oh, it's like one in a million, right? Yeah. I don't know what it is with social media now with TikTok. Is it one in five kids that's going to make a million dollars on TikTok? I don't know that. It's but, crazy. You know what I mean? But this yeah. girl was like, I don't know. I need to figure that out because she wants to have a job. You know, she and that was cool. That was cool for me to hear her say that. But you know, it's been a couple of weeks now, and, and you know, I'm like, hey, come on, you gotta get up and come to school, you know. Um, so but I, I do I blame a lot of that on the situation that we we had back in 2020, 2021, and into 2022. You no, know, it's it's tough these kids. Uh, here's my question for you. Obviously, kids haven't changed, but you know, I tell you my grandpa in his early 20s, you know, he's doing amphibious landings in, in North Africa, Sicily, Italy, North, Fr- you know, France, um, Guam, the Philippines, right? He's in all these places. Um, and we got a guy, you know, that's a Max Soviet singlet, right? And, you know, that's a Milan guy. I'm sure he was out at the barn, right? Um, but we're talking about a guy who, you know, he he's killed. He's a Navy corpsman and he's killed in Afghanistan and the withdrawal from Afghanistan, right? Like, do we have kids who will lay it on the line like that? Right. Like you're saying they don't even want to go get jobs. Are they going to pay the ultimate price? Like this guy did. Do we still have that? I don't even, I, I, I that that's my biggest fear, man. You know, that that's the thing where I'm like, cause I know I can tell you this. I know if you gave my nephew Wyatt something and told him to run under gunfire, that he would do it. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm not concerned about that. No, if you hand, handed my other two nephews a, a gun and told them to run into the gun, they would do it. I know that all the the people in my family, they most they were all pretty, they would do it. And I know that because I've seen them. I've seen them perform under duress. I've taken them into some situations that maybe are a little sketchy that most uncles wouldn't take them in a mountain where there's bears and <laughs> they've climbed and hiked all over with me. Um, I know how they're going to react. I know when it's getting dark and we got to get back to the car down the mountain four miles that they got hustle in them, that they got, they got some guts, right? Or if an animal's stalking it, you know, or we come across, you know, like I, I they don't panic. They're not idiots. Yeah. I know how those guys are going to react. Like I, this guy, mm-hmm. right? He paid the price, mm-hmm. right? This guy paid the price. Do we have that? You know, is, is that lost in this generation? I, I just, that's my concern, right? Like, I don't ask you to have the answer, but that, that's where I get worried. I, you know, I, I think we still have the top percentile, you know, I, I, but what worries me now is the, is the middle. You know what I mean? I, there's a, a lot of, on the bottom that aren't striving for a whole lot right now. And then there's those top tier kids, right? E.T. Brown. Uh, right. Right, JT Brown. If you hand him a firearm and you tell him to crawl mm-hmm. through uh, 800 yards of barbed wire with his face just above the water where he can breathe, the guy's gonna get it done. Wow, well, and he was like that in high school. Messed up shoulder, comes back, takes fourth in the state three weeks later, whatnot. Right, we thought he ruined his shoulder in the duel, in the state duel. He comes back and finds a way to be fourth in the state. You know, um, they're still out there. I'm, I'm confident. You know. It's it's the middle. You know, I, I talk to kids that play all kinds of different sports here at Elyria. And it's like trying to get them over this hump, you know what I mean, of, of genuinely caring about something, about finding a passion, right? I, I think I think we're, we've lost some passion. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. It, it's you pick, 
you pick your thing and you go and you get it. And um, no matter what it is, and I, I'm not sure that that's there, you know, and, and that and that's hard because once like again, I know, I, I know that that Patty Gallagher and Victor Voinovich, if you hand them a rifle and you tell them to go and eliminate the enemy, those guys are going to do it. I mean, you know that about those guys. Those guys are killers, right? Like, those aren't the guys we need to work. We need to worry about, like what you're saying, the middle and the bottom, man. Like, what? Yeah. Well, and that's who makes up the ranks. If you're going to have uh, a war or something like that, those are the people who actually win the war for you. You see that? That's those what you have to count on. Well, going back to what we initially talked about when we first got on here about my job, right? My job is working with kids. Regular kids, not necessarily wrestling champions or somebody aspiring to be a wrestling champion. It's just a kid searching for a purpose, I guess, right? So I, I value what I do, you know what I mean, in, in, in lieu of making a ton of money um, just working with elite kids, you know. Okay. So my – listen, so – I'm going to – I want to start, like, I got some things to throw at you. You can pass or tell. Pass or tell. Got okay. it? Okay. okay. Um, pass or tell. Twisted iced tea guy. Pass. Pass or tell. F around and find out, man, I guess, right? <laughs> I mean, I – the guy, okay, hold on. <laughs> guy uses a racial slur in Elyria, Ohio. He has a twisted iced tea, drops it on the ground. And the guy, the guy drops his twisted iced tea on the ground. Your guy calls the guy a racial slur, right? The guy picks it up, says, hey, stop. He warned the guy multiple times. The guy who he got warned is, is a viral sensation. He was one of your students, right? I I. I have been around him on numerous occasions. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. okay. When you're when you're told something, and you don't and you don't pay attention to what you're being told, and then you go out in real life, and that happens, that's F around and find out, right? There, you've seen the graph for F around and find out. Have you seen it? Yeah, I, I have seen it. Yes. You've seen it. It's true, actually. It's true. It is true. It is true. true. And your because guy, I, listen, your guy became a viral sensation. We're getting slapped with a tip, twisted iced tea in the face. Yeah, man. They made songs about it. And, Dude, uh, I sent you the Dave Matthews, the the uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ants March, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, but let's face it. Like I said, we've all made, we've all made mistakes. Fortunately, the ones I made didn't go viral. <laughs> well, dude, I don't think that guy cashed in though. No, I don't know. I don't. If, know. You, if I recall, I'll say the name now. Yeah, I believe his name is Randall Teeter, right? I'm not sure. Yeah. You're not I, sure? Okay. I so was in the store guy. yesterday. It's funny. I, I thought about it. I thought about it. I was there yesterday. You were at you were at you were at the gas station where he got slapped? That's on the that's the East Side Square J, man. Oh my that's god. Dude. <laughs> so that guy got smacked in the face for for pro I'm guessing people were like, hey man, you probably shouldn't say that, you know. The graph, you know, <laughs> you mess around, you find out. Uh, yeah, and, and he did. I don't think the guy cashed in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Have you seen him cashing in? Have you seen him driving around in a Lamborghini? I have not. No, I, I have not. I think, I think it's safe to say that guy did not cash in, and there was a little gas station justice that night. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Hey, Pat, pass or towel. Pass or tell? Any Kyle Kluter story? Any who? Kyle Kluter story. Ky Who's that? Kyle Kluter. Kluter? Kyle! Bear! Oh, Kyle! The, the neighbor? The neighbor! <laughs> the bird and Chad, my dad. <laughs> Didn't know his last name. Cripes on fire. <laughs> Dude, we pulled in a flatbed. I Give love me a year. Hold on, hold on. Give me a year. Tell me where you're at. Well, I had a driver's license, so it had to be at least my junior year. So, 86, so 1986. Yeah. So I would come up and spend – this is how nuts we were. This is how much I loved you guys and your family. I would have spring break, 
and I would come up to Oak Harbor and go to school because like, you guys. It's like where we live, though, is more Genoa than it is way more Genoa than it is Oak Harbor. You get that. Right? It was more Martin, wasn't it? Well, it's, Mar it's Martin, Ohio, but Martin, yeah. Ohio is directly next to Genoa High School. Yes. So, but yeah, but I would I would go to school and during my spring break because I loved hanging out with you guys. And uh, one night we stayed at Kyle's, and it was me, Ferdy, and Nick Santiola. But we went driving around in the flatbed because I love driving that flatbed. I loved it. So I don't know if we got home late or whatever the hell happened. I don't know. We pulled in and. No sooner than we pulled in the driveway, and we like pulled into the yard there. And dude, Kyle comes out with a shotgun. He's like, Whoosh. he's like pointing it at us. Did he shoot? Did, like, he, did he blow one off? No, like, I, I don't remember him doing that, but he was pointing it right at us. And, and I'm like, Ferd, what the? And he's, and he, you know, Kyle's like, you mother effers, you get in here now. And we go in. And like Ferg said, everything they did was in the kitchen, whether it was the chickens or the cleaning of deer or whatever. So the him and his dudes, a couple guys are in the kitchen. They're doing whatever. And he's like, get upstairs and get to bed. So we start having like these laughing attacks. Ferdy and Nick are arguing about the best Led Zeppelin song or whatever the hell they were talking. I don't know. But then we got to laughing and Kyle was getting pissed. So he'd come up the steps and he'd be like, you guys better knock it up. <laughs> and we'd be like all right okay and we but we couldn't stop laughing so he kept coming up one more step like every time i thought the guy was going to kill us dude. i thought he was going to kill us uh we made it through the night and suffice to say i never stayed over there again man i was like nah i'm good on that I'm i get good. held a gunpoint somewhere most generally i don't go back no but for you know i'm not gonna lie to you i've never been held at gunpoint Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I'm if we're if we're yeah. being honest here, full yeah. disclosure, never been held at gunpoint. Um, but if I were, I would not make a return trip back. Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah, see, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm with you. Yeah, we made we made sure of that. <laughs> but it was a great night. It was a fun, Dude, look, look, what, 27 years later, 30. How many years later? 96. 37. I'm still we're still talking about it, right? I, I probably wouldn't trade. <laughs> Bird told me that you asked about Kyle. The dude's been dead for like 25 years. Hey, I didn't know. I had no clue, man. Dude, yeah. how about that guy was raised by an elementary school teacher and an FBI agent? That's what Birdie was telling me. What the hell, right? What, right? How about the guy had 50 dogs, three black bears at any given time, a fox, Oh, hold on, hold on. How about the questionable judgment on Tom Miller's part? <laughs> moving his kids, him and two of his kids in with this guy so that they could go to Oak Harbor. He knew it was a learning experience. Like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, how about my brother Bird when he lived in that guy's chaos was an undefeated state champion for Oak Harbor? Right, right. And how, and how about he how about he froze the guy's turkeys? <laughs> Remember, they're supposed to be fresh turkeys. He's like, yes. hey, don't, you froze the turkey. Uh, <laughs> dude, the guy was like a complete loose. The guy had a standoff with law with the Ottawa County Sheriff's. I'm not making that up. It's a real like an armed standoff, like a like a like a Koresh deal. I not quite that, but. <laughs> And they never breached. How about the dude got drunk with fire's gun in the air? The neighbors were like, ah, oh, there's someone screaming and cursing. It thinks the Soviets are dropping down. Yeah, Wolverines or I, and, and I then, stay overnight at his house. Yeah. Then <laughs> he'd get all drunk, shoot in the air, scream. Someone would call the cops. They surround it. They surrounded it, dude. That house just burned down. That house that they had, that house burned down in the last year. Oh wow, really? Yeah, demoed and, and then burned down or whatever. It was like in demo and then it got and then it burned to the ground. Anyhow, my dad was like, "Hey, if you guys go in there, he's gonna start shooting back." And they're like, 
my dad's like, guys, he's passed out on the couch. I'm telling you. Will you go in there? My dad goes in. Guess what? Dude's passed out on the couch drunk. How about my dad and brothers lived with this guy for a year? My brother was an undefeated state champion. That's wild, dude. That okay. is wild. Pass or tell? Uh, Ron Burnett stories. So we had a, uh, we would go, he would ride his bike and I would go running. And we'd go down to the Morgan Street Reservoir. And uh, it's got a, 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 a gravel trail around the edge of the res reservoir. It's probably about this wide, maybe three feet across. And uh, so we'd go down there. I'd hit a short run before whatever. And then we'd hit the hill. My dad would have me put my soccer spikes on and run up and down this hill uh, numerous times. But one night, we got a late start. We went down there and it, it got dark. By the time I finished running up and down the hill, it had got it, it had gotten dark, so I put my running shoes back on because we were going to run laps around the reservoir. So he was on his bike ahead of me, and it's dark. Like at this point, it's pitch black, and I'm like, "Hey!" And you know how I was with my dad. Like I just did what I was supposed to, you know. <laughs> um, and I'm behind him, and I'm like, "Dude, I can't see." Like so, there's a hill on this side where I mean, the hill's fifty feet. Oh wow! And it's, yeah, and it's like, yeah. If I if I roll my ankle, dude, I'm gonna roll down the hill, probably break break my limbs, whatever, right? And then on the other side is water, and I'm not the strongest swimmer. I'm like 11 years old, whatever. So my dad's pretty, and in, in, he's pretty. Uh, what do you want to say? Ingenuitive, I guess would be a word. He he lights a cigarette, <laughs> and he's like, follow this. So he's riding his bike. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I thought we'd be that done for the night, right? So the dude <laughs> came smoked until I could get my work out in. I don't know. I was there, I was there for like an hour running around his reservoir. I'm like, dude, come on. You got to be out of smoke by now. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed an extra pack, you knew. Right, right. He, he probably did. Like on the way there, he's like, yeah, it's getting dark. I'm going to have to do the old cigarette trick tonight. Keep him on the pack. <laughs> dude, whatever it took, right? <laughs> right? Do the deal. Alex Japanovich said it. He said it at the induction on Sunday. Do the deal. That's what he did. We went to the Burger King tournament, dude, at Lake Catholic. We, uh, and this is, and you know, I, I don't want anybody to judge him, man. This is way back in the day. We didn't know any better, right? Nobody knew any better. I have to preface this story. Hold on. How long has the Ron, how long has your dad, Ron Burnett, been gone? Uh, seven, oh, 16. Seven years here uh, next month. Okay, so seven years. Yeah. So he, um, we go to the Burger King tournament at Lake Catholic High School, sponsored by Burger King. Every match you win, you get a, you get a coupon for a hamburger. Every match you pin a guy, I think you got a coupon for like a Whopper. Pretty good tournament. I had two, two decisions and two pins. So me and my dad are like, that man, we're like driving home. We stop at Burger King, we're grubbing. We get home, and you know, back in the day, dude, there was no internet, nothing like that, right? But we walk into the kitchen, and on the kitchen table is a tournament form. You know, the old school tournament forms. And there was a tournament on Sunday down in North Canton. And uh, so my dad is like, I, I go in, and I, I take a shower or whatever, and I come out. He's like, hey, what do you think? You want to wanna go wrestle tomorrow? And, and you know, I, I never said no. I, I kind of didn't want to go, but so we look at the weight classes. I think the weight might have been like 71, and I weighed like 71 and a half. He's like, You want to go 71 or you want to go 75? It's up to you, totally up to you. I'm like, Well, I'm probably going to drift a half a pound. I'll just, you know, I'll go to bed and get up, and whatever. Mind you, dude, I just ate a big, I just ate a whopper, I, I, whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> I go to bed. And I get up, dude, and I didn't drift. So I'm still like a half over. So he's like, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'm going to go start the car. So he goes out. He starts. We had this little black rabbit, this little Volkswagen rabbit. So he goes out. And he's got this car running for probably 
a half hour, 45 minutes. We get in it. And I got, I'm like bundled up. We get in it and he just starts driving. He's like, you're going to make weight. Don't worry about it. We're going to make it. So we're driving. It's probably 90 some degrees in the car, man. And, but my dad, he smoked cigarettes, right? So he had his coffee. He fires up a heater, man. And he's got the window cracked, you know, right? And my, my dumb ass is like, dad, dad, don't put the window down too much, right? Both my parents smoked at the time. I was pretty used to it, but it's like, dude, so what? Canton's, what, an hour and 15 minutes from Oberlin? We got there, man. I was sweating my ass off, coughing, like, just, like, smelled like a cigarette. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I ended up making weight, wrestled some tough guys, ended up winning the tournament. The one dude... After my after my semifinal match, was like, oh man, I mean we're like eleven years old, right? The kid's like, how how did you beat me? You're a smoker. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled like a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, that's just a couple, but you know he that dude there, man. You know, my mom straightened me up on him. You know, when I I got mad at him, real real mad at him one time. She took me down to the basement, and showed me his softball stuff that was put away, and his bow and arrow was put away, his bowling ball and a bowling bag. Everything was dusty, cobwebs. And she's like, you know, I think I was like a freshman in high school. And she's like, yeah, man, your dad hasn't done any of that stuff since he started coaching. She's like, he loved doing all that stuff. You know, kind of stood me up, man. You know what I mean? So he was, he was there, man. He was there for us, bro. You know? Okay, uh, Scotty, you want to t- you got any Scotty? Pastor Towel, got any Scotty stories? Yeah, man, Scotty. Scotty was fun, man. He he uh he came back from college and we 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 wrestled out in Lagrange one day and we went for like an hour. I mean, it was he was intense, man. And I was young, you know, I was 30, 30 at the time. He was twenty, I was thirty, and man, that that was so much fun. Um. You know, when he was in high school, you know, I got to coach him a lot. Like my dad let me drive him around and things like that. You know, um, we we just had a blast. I don't really have anything. You know what I mean? Like there was nothing. No fight. There was no fighting. Yeah. I mean, my dad was like, you probably shouldn't go live with him. Because, you know, Scott, well, look, everybody wants to kick their older brother's ass, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, but I was at the older I got, when I got into my thirties, I didn't want to give up takedowns. It hurt, you know? So he got frustrated here and there and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, I, I ran in the, I ran in the apartment, the barn one time. Cause I thought he was going to beat my ass. Um, <laughs> you know, me and Tadaki were in the barn. <laughs> yeah, Scotty's like, open the door. But, uh, but uh, yeah, it was, it was just one of those deals. We just wrestled so long with nobody getting a takedown. You know, this guy, he's like, wants to kill me, you know? Um, do you do you think Gray, your your nephew Gray, can can be a world champion? Do you think your nephew Gray, he's obviously won Fargo, um, won a gauntlet weight class. He beat the Cassio B brothers back to back. Can Gray Burnett be, obviously, can he be the best Burnett there has ever been? Yeah, I think that talent wise, he's there. Work ethic wise, he's there. He seems to have the, the mental capacity and the emotional. Yeah, man. If, if he, as long as he keeps loving the sport, man, you know, and that's the big thing. And I think I, I feel like Scotty and Jody have, um, have made it that way. You know what I mean? Where, where the kid digs it, and um, I think they've done a great job. You know, he loses and, a lot. You know what I know about Gray? Gray loses a lot. Well, you said he's not afraid. No, he that's hates, that's going to lose a lot. Like Gray will uh, lose, and, and he, he's been the best guy. He'll lose five, six times a year. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he weight manages, you know, for for the big things, and otherwise he just wrestles. He went to grappler. He wrestled whatever the weight was, one thirteen. I mean, it's you know, um, but no, he's not there. No, he's not afraid to go out there. And if he loses, he loses, and that that's so healthy, dude. Because obviously he wants to win. You know what I mean? He's not happy when he loses. Okay, he's not happy, but um, he, he typically doesn't throw a fit. You know, I, no, I, I think he's just going to keep getting better and better. You know? Can we see, you know, like uh, the, they got Marcus Blaze. Um, they're, uh, they both wrestle for your brother, but they're Burnett trained guys, obviously. I mean, Gray Burnett's as Burnett trained as it gets, right? 
Yeah. Um, do we see those guys? You know, Logan Stever was a phenom. He took third in the U.S. Open as a as a sophomore in high school, right? And then you had the pleasure of having your two guys, Danny Mitchiff and Logan Stever, Russell for third and fourth one year at the Open, and it's like just crazy stuff, right? Like you, oh, the Kasi Sabi, yeah, yeah. You you've you've seen all these different high level things, right? Like it's pretty amazing what you've seen and the guys you've coached. But are those guys of that? Are they that caliber? Can they be as good as a Logan Stever? Um, I, I think. Marcus is older. Um, from what I've been seeing, yes, he could be. Gray's still young. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not I'm not sure yet. But you know, Marcus is a, you know he's a junior in high school now. From what I'm seeing, seeing and um, potentially, yeah. You know, I like I said, Logan. You know, he, he won. What was he? U twenty ones when he was a sophomore, and then the next year as a junior, he goes to the Open. He takes third, and then the, his senior year, actually, his weight class was more loaded, and he knocks off the reigning Olympian in the quarterfinals when he beat Hazelwood. I mean, we're talking about a high school senior. You know what I mean? He lost to Escobedo in the last ten seconds in the semifinals. I mean, that's freak show type stuff right there. You know, I, I, so yeah, man, um, those those kids are talented, and more importantly, they really love wrestling, and that that. That comparison to Logan, that's true. Like those guys, they love wrestling like he did, you know. And but Logan, Logan's, I think Logan's an Olympic champion in my in my mind, right? I mean, you can we can hear, sit here and say that, but his body just he just couldn't his body, his body couldn't hold up. His knack, you know, is his knack. I think things like things happen, man. Right? It's like, you know, um, he, you'll never hear him say that. You know, he won't. You know, he owns, he owns everything, you know, and that, that, that's the beauty about Logan. Look at the world title he won. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had an absolutely, his world championship weight was loaded. I mean, the three guys that he beat, how about, hey, how about his, his finalist opponent was the worst guy? Wow. <laughs> Isn't that nuts, man? The guy he beat, dude. The Islam poor match with the Iranian Islam poor is uh crazy, and then he had a crazy match with Ahmed Chakayev. I mean, dude, the guys he beat in that bracket were like it was bonk. Well, the 2016 is an Olympic year, but it was a non contested Olympic weight, right? It was right. six kilos or whatever. 61, I forget. But anyhow, I mean, what just a just unreal, man. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? And here's the other thing people forget. Logan Stever won a world title before David Taylor did. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, obviously, David Taylor is is a guy who's a, Russell's like a little guy at a big weight, right? I mean, yeah. and his style, and, and David does everything right. David lives right. David does everything about us. I mean, David is thinking about Paris right now. Yeah. He's thinking about smashing Yazdani in Paris right now, you know, yeah. just, just smashing them. But like, it's awesome to watch him. You know, we got to see these guys at the ground level, right? Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah, it, it certainly was. And that, you know, and that's the cool thing, you know, even doing what, what I'm, what we're doing now, you know what I mean? Where we got some good young kids right now, man, that, Maybe someday, who knows? You know, and we're working with them right now. You know, that's that's cool. You know, barn stories. You got any pie craft barn stories for me? You know, most of them, you dude. Know? Hey, how about the one night I'm staying there and I was alone? You were up in with your family and with your wife in Elyria, or you're engaged, your fiance, whatever, and. It was before we all had cell phones and I remember like these sirens going off and there was a, an, an escaped inmate at the Grafton penitentiary. Yeah. That was close. Right through the woods over the river. Yes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, were you there for the tornado? I don't think I was. A camp yes, I was. I like was. Because didn't we try and go to Pycraft's, uh, we went to Pycraft's uh, cellar, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was there for yeah, that. So in the middle of the night, 
Remember, Johnny would never stay with us. He'd always stay at the house, right? Yeah. So Johnny comes running into the building at like two o'clock in the morning. He's like, everybody, we got to get to the cellar, right? So we, ra we ran over there. We spent probably an hour in the cellar that night. Man. It was crazy. So then the next morning, um, things were better, but still, still stormy, but better. And then during the session, the 9 to 11 session, Jim Piecraft called my apartment phone. And I, I picked up because I recognized the caller ID. I picked up. He's like, hey, tornado spotted like a mile west of the barn. He's like, you guys got to get over to the cellar, right? So we're gathered. Yeah, because that night, even when we came back, everybody had to sleep with their shoes right next to them. Like, like right next to their sleep. So... We had to halt the session, mid-session. And I remember that tractor that was parked right next to the other barn. There was a tractor park, and they had a green tarp over it. And the wind was blowing so hard, dude, like the, you could see every detail of that tractor in the tarp, right? And we were running. Like it, 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 the, wind, the wind was pushing us back. And I remember pushing kids, and we were just trying to get all the kids into the cellar. And then I'm like, Oh, where's Tadaki? So I turn around and I run real fast back to the barn because now the tornado's pushing me. Pushing you, right yeah. Behind. So I'm like, whoa. I get in the barn. Dude, I go in the apartment. Tadaki's making a sandwich. <laughs> like, I'm like, he's, he's, he's I'm like, coach. <laughs> I'm like, there's a tornado. Oh, no. <laughs> Tadaki, no panic. Uh... No panic. He's like, eh, eh. I, I thought we were going to get the roof blown off. I'm sitting there with him. I'm like, we're going to get our roof blown off. This is it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that was Who did you make dude, me you torture? Who did you make me torture? Uh, Dave Habit and Sean Boyle. You made me make them run with weights. Oh, God. Remember that? They overslept. They slept through the run. Yeah. Well, remember when Cam, when it uh, wasn't me, remember the puke on the bottom of the steps yeah. of the camper? Wasn't me. Yeah. I'm like, you you drank the whole thing of Mountain Dew and ate the pizza. And to this day, I bet you he would deny it. Yeah. Remember yeah. remember the sheep? Yeah, I'm told sorry. You? Come on, buddy. <laughs> somebody got burned. They burned somebody. I didn't oh. do it. Yeah. Okay. We well, didn't do it. I'm so glad he figured it out, man. He was yeah. doing so good now. And then hey. I remember. I remember uh, we couldn't go on the road because somebody almost got hit one day. <laughs> we're not we're not gonna mention. We'll we'll leave that alone. And um, I was running them up and down the apple orchards. Yeah. And I remember the, the grass was dewy. And I remember, all right, we're bear crawling. And Logan Stever looked at me. He goes, "Are you are you serious?" I go, "As a heart attack." So I did it first. And then they all did it. And that was yeah. like, it sucked, man. It was terrible. <laughs> Dude, man. Yeah, it was yeah. a good time, though. Moving there was, was crazy. And I remember some brawls out there. And just a good time, man. I, I've had so much fun. I'm so happy to have you guys in my life and have had that experience out there and to have plunged all the toilets and mopped all the mats. <laughs> oh, remember the football? That football turd. It was a oh, football. Yeah. Dude, Jack actually saved the day that day because he, he he went in with the ice scooper. And he he got it and he, he chucked it over the over the fence over Into by the, the goat, sheep. with the goats, right or the sheep. Remember when they they kept crashing heads together? It sounded like a car door. Was you thought the car door, and then you went out one <laughs> like laying there. Yeah, that was a wrap for that one. Oh man, that was Dunzo there. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, it, dude. All right. You got all anything right. else for me? I don't, man. Thanks, Zeb. Thanks for anything all you about do. your beautiful wife. Nah, man. I'm just I'm so glad she picked my dumb ass. I can't lie. <laughs> I'm lucky. <laughs> I got lucky. I love it. Well, coach, stick around. Thanks for coming on the Ohio Cat Pod Ohio Cast Podcast. Stick around. Congratulations on yet another uh Hall of Fame, National Hall of Fame for the Ohio chapter of the National Hall of Wrestling Hall of Fame um, induction. Uh, here. It's certainly an honor to be in there. With, it's an honor to be in there with those guys, man. It's just uh, surreal. Where's the no, jacket? Can, why don't we have the jacket? Where's the jacket? Oh, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I it, I think it's out in the I don't know where it is. 
I'm an idiot. I don't know. Coach, thanks for the time. Stick around. All right. Thanks, man.